the scrubbing. <laughs> You're laughing. You want to you want to tell us about those days, those meetings? I mean, we met for hours and hours. What we did was we took that, in particular, that HVAC, and we sorted them in descending dollar amount, and we broke each project down by component. And we thought about it, was it a repair issues? Was it a component replacement or a full system upgrade? How could you deal with that same issue in another way? I don't think that the independent assessment talked to you folks an awful lot. Part of the problem, these assessments, because the guys in the trenches and the guys in the field that are dealing with these systems every day have a pretty good sense of what you do to fix them and why they're not working or why they are working well. Listen to them. That scrubbing process of being able to break down those projects ultimately took that $1.6 billion need and turned it into a 10-year, $720 million need. A big change. From there, we then went through that 720 and started re-signing priorities. Not in terms of what they said were, it has to be done urgently, but a time frame. Should it be done within three years, four to seven, or eight to 10? The reason we went to time frame is so you can tie it into the financial planning of the university. So they understand where the cash flows have to be lined up so that you can get money consistently with the projects as they're coming due. I call it the alignment. Now notice, the first three years is 189 million, and then 364 million that goes into seven, versus 1.2 billion dollars in five. The dynamic changed fundamentally because all of a sudden this looked like a manageable issue. We had to define deferred maintenance. You know my opinion on deferred maintenance. I already shared that with you. Well, I, I think the committee starting to share my opinion on, on that. Uh, and they wanted to move the definition. Now, I know this is a big deal, for, especially for the public universities in, here in Texas, uh, because of the coordinating board and, and how, how capital gets allocated. Um, we're worried about defining deferred maintenance as the rate at which you're adding to your backlog. That gap between the amount of money that's funded for stewardship versus the need for stewardship. Think of it as a draw rate on endowment or a spending plan of, on a, some other kind of financial asset. You would not go every year with a different spending target just because of whatever the current economics are of the situation. You'd, you'd adhere to some sort of long range plan. That's what we're advocating, that institutions start not necessarily fully fund their stewardship, but manage their deferral rate on a consistent basis and with a game plan, with a purpose. You know, uh, some campuses we see will drive down and open up their deferral rate because they know there's a large capital program coming on. That's okay. Other campuses will close that deferral rate because they know they're done with their capital program for a number of years. So it, it works different ways, but you need to understand and manage the situation. We were able to put the projects into buckets and actually use this with the committee so they could see. And what we did was we took each project so that you had this, what are the repairs, what are the modernizations, and there were no alterations, we just didn't have any alterations in the budget, in, in the inventory here. We broke it down, time frame A, time frame B, time frame C, and then we instituted another, I call it an output category. We call it an investment criteria. Is it an issue of reliability, asset preservation, space improvement, economic savings opportunity, or a code, a safety code issue? And you start sorting every project into one of those buckets. Well, now all of a sudden, you look at the repairs, and remember, we are talking now a $720 million backlog of which you're talking $43 million, which is, what, about 7 6%? That's a priority reliability. Talk about helping the project selection process along, move along in a more informed way. You have to be able to manipulate and manage your inventory in a way that communicates what your needs are. More importantly, it communicates what you're choosing to defer. 
you know, because all of a sudden we're saying, here, you can see that, that if you look at, there's the first 100 million, here's the next 280 million. Why are you picking things in this area? Well, there are repairs that are reliable, reliability issues, but not as important as the ACE. So now you can start arraying and aligning things to make some degree of sense. We broke the campus into portfolios. The academic core, academic west part of the campus, the buildings that are transitional. Buildings that they thought were either going to be a totally renovated or potentially raised, we put into a separate category. You know, and then you can read the rest. And you know, so now the data, we can sort this any way you want. We can go by year of when it needs to be done, investment criteria by component, system, you name it. But now all of a sudden, we've built the investment program around the constituents. That says, in your buildings, these are the things that we think are important. We just haven't made blanket statements that, that treat all, you know, here, this is not all buildings are created equal. Remember I said that? This is what this does. Some of these, prior, some of these portfolios are more important than others. What that did was it allowed us to create a priority process. So we took that total inventory, we broke all the projects down by building portfolio, we added the time frame. So again, we, we broke it down even deeper. Once we got to the time frame, then we added the investment criteria to break down the subcomponents. And then beyond that, we actually had a scoring process that would break the ties. We didn't use the scoring process at the beginning, we used it at the end. Very different approach than you'll see from a lot of other organizations, a lot of other approaches on how to deal with that. This enabled the committee as well as the facility folks to start developing a new paradigm, a new approach, a new process that would help deliver more effectively what, what was driven. This was one of those really key issues of how to set priorities for the campus. And I think um, the building portfolio method that they use will really help a lot on the funding perspective side also because obviously there's always parts of campus that are going to be more of your main focus. So to be able to look out there and say, okay, we have $100 million, but our academic core is the most important, will help with the identifying where we're going to put the funding. And we ultimately came down to a recommendation to spend $505 million. And the way, and the rationale was that basically the C's would be nice to have, but let's face it, we're not going to get there really quickly. <laughs> the transitional buildings should be taken off the table, and we put some money, we call it a just-in-time reserve. It's kind of like a, a deductible on your, on your automobile policy, <laughs> you know, so that there's some money set aside um, that actually would fix anything that would, right about right before it would fail. Just in time, just, just before it fails, you spend the money, that ultimately gives you some, um, that, that would limp that building along until it, until it meets its transition point. And then the rest, uh, uh, which really focused on reliability issues, safety issues, were very high in the, in the first recommended actions. And then, and then we broke it down. The game plan basically brought, was designed to bring down that portfolio, to bring down the backlog. The backlog, and the only time, and you gotta recognize this, when you have that stewardship target, if your total between your annual money and your one-time money is less than that stewardship target, you're still deferring even though you're putting money into it. You're just slowing the rate. So you gotta get above that line for several years <laughs> to really make a substantive difference and, and, and to really see change and, and have a, a, a capital impact. Again, we can set the targets on what projects you need to do, that's pretty easy you know how the process of how to do it, but if you don't have the policy that says we are going to invest as a university above that stewardship target for several years continuously, we're not going to see fundamental transformational change on the facilities. 